Time for business news now. I'm joined for that by Kate Moody. Hi there, Kate. Hi, Catherine. And we're going to start off in the UK. New government taking office. Uh, some new economic policies, it seems, to go with it. Yeah, all eyes are going to be on the Bank of England. Uh, later on, it's widely expected to cut interest rates in a sort of preemptive move to shield the British economy from the worst of the Brexit fallout. Now, interest rates are already at a historic low of 0.5%. If they're lowered further, that would be the first time in seven years the idea would be to make it still cheaper and easier to borrow money. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney has also indicated that he's prepared to pump more money into the economy if necessary, possibly billions of pounds. That could be announced later this Thursday or later on this summer. New Finance Minister Philip Hammond, meanwhile, has said that there will not be an emergency budget in the coming weeks by the new government. Uh, he'll also be meeting with Carney later on this morning. All right, some updates to watch out for from there. How are the markets faring today? Well, the prospect of this looming B of E uh, decision is boosting markets a little bit. Uh, European markets just opened for trading a few moments ago, and we are seeing green across the board, as you can see there. Uh, the London FTSE up about 0.8%, Kekiant a bit more, and at the Frankfurt DAX leading gains about 1.4%, uh, and crossing over the 10,000-point barrier as the session gets underway. Uh, so it looks like we're heading off to a pretty good start on the European markets. Uh, we did see a mixed picture in Asia, uh, just the Shanghai Composite ending downwards there. Uh, we've been seeing Nintendo uh, with a boost this Thursday. Its shares up 16% this Thursday, up nearly 60% for the week. That's since its smash hit Pokemon Go game became available. Uh, focus will be shifting to China as we close out the week. The world's second largest economy expected to release data on Friday, showing the steadily slowing pace of growth in the second quarter. Figures expected to be just near or perhaps just under the 6.7% rate that we saw in the first three months of the year. All right, now uh, we were just talking about a, a controversial job, François Hollande's uh, personal hairdresser and his uh, rather high salary, as some are putting it. Uh, you've got some more uproar now about another controversial job. This is a, a former top European official, Jose Manuel Barroso, uh, who's taken up a job at an investment banking giant and ruffled some feathers in the process. Yeah, we heard last week that Goldman Sachs uh, was going to be hiring the former EU commissioner as an advisor, uh, specifically on how the bank should be dealing with Brexit. Now, the timing of this announcement is legal. Uh, it's about 20 months after Barroso left office, but the French government is now leading calls for him not to take the position describing the move as scandalous. Nick Rushworth has the details. He bowed out as EU Commission President 20 months ago. Now, a couple of months after his cooling off period on jobs he can take has ended, he's taking up a senior role with none other than Goldman Sachs, a bank associated with the 2008 financial crisis. The French government says that is particularly scandalous on the part of Jose Manuel Barroso. Rules on conflict of interest must be tightened up. It's a mistake on Mr. Barroso's part, morally, politically, ethically, and the worst disservice that a former commission president could do to the European project at a moment in its history when it needs to be supported and strengthened. Goldman Sachs said last week that Barroso was henceforth advisor and non-executive chairman of its international business. EU Economics and Financial Affairs Commissioner Pierre Moscovici, a former French finance minister, criticised the appointment as bad for the Commission's image as Brexit begins. And it is just that, Brexit, that Barroso is being hired to help the bank prepare for. He will work in London. Jean Quatremer, the Brussels correspondent for France's main left-wing paper, Liberation, said the move was a disastrous symbol for the EU, a boon for Europhobes. Of a special anger in France is that Barroso was EU Commission president. When it came to light, Goldman Sachs had helped Athens reduce its debt burden with cross-currency derivatives, worsening Greece's debt crisis. Let's move on to some of the day's other business headlines for you now. Tesla says its autopilot feature was activated during a car crash on Sunday, just a month after a fatal accident also involving its driver assist function. The electric car maker suggested the software was not being used correctly at the time of this weekend's crash in the state of Montana. Authorities in California have rejected Volkswagen's plan to recall and fix its cars that are equipped with emissions cheating software. The German automaker has agreed a nearly $16 billion deal to settle consumer lawsuits over the scandal. California's chief air regulator says the proposal is insufficient and is working with VW to find an acceptable fix.
And a U.S. court has ruled that people affected by faulty ignition switches in their General Motors cars can sue the company. The defect led to hundreds of injuries and even deaths and resulted in the recall of 2.6 million cars in 2014. The ruling overturns part of a 2009 bankruptcy agreement which protected the automaker from claims stemming from earlier crashes. All right, let's talk about slightly more celebratory matters. As we've been reporting, it is Bastille Day today, the French national holiday, 14 juillet. Uh, we've got that big parade coming up on the Champs-Élysées uh, at the top of the hour. Later on, there's going to be a concert at the Eiffel Tower, some fireworks, all well and good. But some people saying, how much is this all costing us? Uh, quite a lot of it's being paid for out of public money, isn't it? Well, pretty much all of it. It is indeed. Uh, and a lot of French cities have actually been scaling back, particularly their fireworks budgets in recent years because of criticism like that. Uh, now, that's not the case here in Paris. <laughs> Mayor Anne Hidalgo is devoting about 700,000 euros to the fireworks. That's a similar sum to what we've seen in recent years. Uh, but to put it in a bit of international perspective for you, it's not nearly as much as many other cities spend. The U.S. city of Boston, for example, spent about $2.5 million on its 4th of July fireworks just recently. Uh, London spent about 2 million euros on its New Year's display this year, while Dubai took the crown with about 5 million euros worth of New, Year New Year's fireworks just a few years ago. Uh, so certainly expecting quite a lot from Paris, but not perhaps as much as some other major cities. It's literally money to burn, isn't it? But it is very pretty. It is indeed. I like watching it. I hope it you'll anyway. be watching it tonight. Thanks very much. Kate Meady there with our business headlines.